Have you ever wondered if there's a good way to walk away from a friend? My best friend growing up couldn't walk. When we were little kids, he could walk. His name was Bobby Zimke. He was my next door neighbor. And, excuse me. And um, lived next door. And the Zimkes just always welcomed us into their home, each one of us kids, and loved us. But Bobby and I became particularly close. We used to play time machines to eternity. We would go out the little patio outside my back bedroom door and we'd spin the wheelchair around in circles and circles. He had muscular dystrophy and he could walk a little, like I said, when we were young, then got into the wheelchair. And we'd spin that thing around like crazy on the back wheel. We would race it down Stern Street on the back wheel going full speed until twice, not once, but twice. I dropped him, he got concussions, had to go to the hospital both times and his mom said, we had to stop. We used to fly kites in the park through the open lot. We used to cut through the open lot and go down to the clubhouse at El Dorado Golf Course and get french fries afterwards. Kids could be particularly mean. They hollered out, Hey Ironside! Hey Cripple! And they called names and sometimes Bobby cried. It just made me angry. It made me really angry. Bobby died on a Monday night. No one told me that muscular dystrophy was terminal. When they rushed him to the emergency room, they asked him if he needed anything, and he said he wanted to see God and Mr. Denton, my dad. So they called my dad. My dad called the church where I was at at a Monday Nighters event as a kid. I was in 10th grade. Dad took me down to the emergency room. I got there, and he was already gone. I don't talk about it a whole lot. In fact, I suppressed it for years. We rushed into the emergency room. Betty embraced me and held me. She said, you don't want to see him like this. Then she sat me down and she said, do you know why we put the big window in Bobby's room that overlooks Stern Street? I didn't know why because as you got older and had friends you wanted to go out and Bobby really didn't like fishing and he couldn't get out much anymore and you didn't have time to stop by he just wanted to watch you to see where you're going to see what was going on with your life it hurt me so deeply that she said that I thought she was saying it to be mean it took me a lifetime to realize that Betty was trying to say something that she had a hard time saying it was this, that Bobby loved you so much, and we wanted him to be a part of your life still. She said, we understood that you were growing older, Eric, and I said I was sorry. But there it was, just the same. I could still walk, I could still run, I could still play, I could go sailing. Bobby was only getting weaker and weaker until he could barely move his arms. And I stopped stopping in to even listen to music with Bobby or to eat dinner with him very often. I ate dinner there so often. Half much late at my house, it seems like. And I've thought about how you walk out on a friend. Same year Bobby died, I had my first seizure. It was so unexpected. Major or organs in my body shut down, mostly internal organs in my stomach and my intestinal tract on that first seizure. Second seizure I had, a few months later, my lungs stopped. They had a hard time resuscitating me. I nearly died, and I spent a week or so in the hospital. Bobby was already gone. Betty came over to visit me, and she had a box for my mom. I was restricted to lay on the couch in the family room. After Betty came in and talked to me for a bit and hugged my mom, they cried together, and she left. I asked my mom what she had brought her. My mom brought it over, and it was all the gear they have for someone who's dying of muscular dystrophy when their lungs get weak so that you can resuscitate them. And she said, Bobby, would want Eric to have this in case you need to try to resuscitate them. I'm so sorry that you need it. And I thought about what a beautiful mother's gift that was for me to my mom. To be honest with you, I don't know if mom ever had to use it or not. Those years are kind of a blur and Across the next 10 or 15 years, where I was really struggling to adjust, 
with this new life as they put me on medication as I was seeing neurologists from one end of the planet to the next and going through all these changes. There was one thing I never did. I didn't keep my seizures a secret. I started talking about them. I had a seizure at school, so it was a good thing it wasn't a secret. A bunch of guys I ate lunch with came out. They started telling me they were on medication too. They had a seizure problem. We called ourselves a seizure for lunch bunch. <laughs> Sounds funny now. But this is what I would think. I would think to myself, I got to walk around and look fine, look good, be healthy. No one could feel what I was going through inside as they changed one medication to the next, as they went through all the problems and I had a seizure in the middle of the night someplace or found myself hanging off a wall by my teeth or whatever happened so awful. But when I was places, people didn't know that that was my problem. When Bobby was places, everyone knew that he couldn't walk. People could make fun of Bobby. And I thought about Bobby, and it just didn't seem fair to me that I would keep what was going on in my life a secret. And so I kept it open. And because of Bobby's strength, something that he couldn't get away from, he would have loved to have gotten away from, telling myself Bobby would have loved to have had just seizures instead of muscular dystrophy. Bobby would love to be alive today. I tell myself even still when I'm running sometimes on a hard run. And so I was open about it. And it allowed me to integrate that which was in my life to become a part of me so I wasn't ashamed. And it allowed me to be able to move forward. It took 10, 15 years, but it allowed me to just the same. So when Bobby left me, he left me with a gift. How do you leave a friend? The best way to leave a friend is with the gift that you have. If you love people, hold on to them with both hands. Love is such a rare gift. If you love some people, make sure that you let them know how important they are to you. And if you love someone, in your strength and your weaknesses, make sure that you let them know who you want them to be at their best as you live out your best every single day. Because you see, who you are makes them the miracle that they're yet to be. Whatever miracles I have in me, a lot of it came from my good friend Bobby Zimke, who I carry with me everywhere I go. Who do you carry with you everywhere you go? Don't let go of them, hold on to them with both hands. If they're alive, write them a note, give them a call, talk to them, and tell them just how much they mean to you every day, even still. And if they're dead, carry their memory with strength and with honor, integrate it into yourself, and don't let their story God die. God bless you, be the miracle today. Sorry for crying. The older I get, it just seems to rise up to the top and roll out my eyes. Have a fantastic day. I'm going to go finish my run. Think about Bobby. I know he would have loved to have run with me. Be the miracle.